Hey kid, wanna get some free LP and team fight tactics? Well, the meta is super full of reroll comps right now, and somehow everyone has forgotten Varus is a unit, and a damn good one at that. He's a swift shot with a built-in stun, as well as he's literally an astral, so he's easier than any other like unit to reroll. So today I'm gonna teach you how to get some free LP, playing one of my favorite comps of set seven so far, Varus reroll. Now, like almost every other carry in this set, you really enjoy Rage Blade on Varus. So we're gonna start this first carousel off with a bow it's on an atrax which is not really great for us now this comp is forcible with almost any start i uh did make a video talking about the early stages mid stages and late stages but it is most preferable when you get astrals early specifically if you're able to get an alawi first i think alawi is even more important than getting a varus early just because you really don't like messing around with your front line and varus is easily replaceable with any other swift shot but allow is really great because skarner's a bruiser and you're able to get a bruiser front line early going rather than having to run a mage and a bruiser and not really getting any synergy there. So this early allow is going to put us in a really strong spot. You do just want to get Astral's in as early as possible to get every shop refresh counted for the Astral shops. And after that, we're just going to try and get Skarner for the two bruiser. Now for Augments, I really like Preparation, Ascension, Press the Attack, or Second Wind. Second Wind is like the most broken Augment in the game right now. But with our options, we get Preparation and Ascension. I really like Preparation for reroll comps like other than Nidalee because you only really roll down for Nidalee once, all down at 3-1. But for Varus, Preparation is really good, giving him extra AD and AP, and so we take that pretty easily. Ascension's another good option, but Meditation's pretty bad, since for your main damage dealers, you're gonna give them all items, hopefully, so they don't really care about their cast, they care way more about their auto attacks. And Neutrals also give us Twitch, which is gonna be our other Swift shot, mostly for this comp. Earlier game, you're just gonna wanna get your three Astral, and then start off with Twitch and Ezreal. For two Swift shot, Ezreal being an item carry, or you can use Nami, and then you're gonna swap that out with Varus later. So here on 2-1, with a Vlad to an Alawi and a Nami, we decide to throw in a Heimerdinger, just for three mages. At level four, we're kind of going to lose probably. It's not very strong at this point, especially without Skarner in for two bruiser and that extra health. But once we get to level five and we have two swift shot in, we should be pretty okay and stabilize. Especially after being nerfed, Nami really is just there to help us get a kill or two. And we're going to just try and save as much HP as possible. Also, if you get an early Nidalee too, she can be a great item carry for Varus. The only thing is that normally they're going to be hogged up by the Nidalee reroll players. Now, once we get a Skarner, we're actually going to put it in over Nami for that uh, bruiser front line. And we're going to put items on our Twitch. Twitch is pretty decent actually early game as a damage dealer unless there are assassins in the lobby. L assassins just are actually really dangerous for this comp. His guild giving him extra attack speed makes it so that even without swift shot he does get a decent amount of speed on him and manages to help us win a round. Now with this board you really just want to stabilize, get maybe yourself a Skarner 2, uh, find yourself an Ezreal 2, but then you're going to get to level 6, get up to 50 econ, and slow roll for your Alawi and Varus 2. So we make 10 gold at 2-3 th which is not bad. And we're kind of losing a couple of fights, but we're trying to keep up our health as much as possible, killing a couple of units. But on second carousel, our Rage Blade was actually stolen from us. So instead, we're going to get a sword. Ideally, Virus wants Rage Blade, Death Blade, and then Runon's Hurricane. So a sword is also a decent secondary option. A bow also would have been good here. Or even Cloak, but Cloak it tends not to be contested very late in the game. Now, we do get super lucky here on stage 2-5, uh, landing both an Alawi and a Varus. It's not even our Astral Shop yet. You can tell by this little highlighting that our Astral Shop will not actually actually come until our next rotation. So now we've got Alawi 2 and we have our Varus and we're able to sell that Vlad that we didn't need because we have our three Astrals. And this is going to be the core of our comp. Three Astral, two Swift Shot, two Bruiser. Now Varus is going to be a little weak starting off. He's not a super strong champion, but just because of how easy he is to three star as a three cost, that's our main goal with him. And Swift Shot's already so broken, but everyone's always focusing on Zaya as a carry and Rage Wing. Meanwhile, we're able to get one of the best tanks in the game and a decent carry that is relatively uncontested. And now that we have this Alawi 2, we're actually going to try and win streak a decent amount if we can. So at Krugs, we're able to hit level 5, and we do throw in a Silas. In my opinion, it's more important to set up a front line than it is to set up your uh, damage units, especially right now, because Lee Sin's super broken in the meta, and he just knocks your front line literally out of the way. So having a third unit that might get knocked away, or a third unit that we can use to bait assassins, I think is really important, more so than even throwing in this Ezreal. We did get ourselves a belt, a tier, and a chain vest, none of which really make any super great items for our comp, so we're going to kind of leave them all on the edge the best thing we could have done here is slam a redemption or a sunfire on Alawi. the main thing is we just really don't need it we're pretty healthy and we're going to stabilize very hard on level six so i don't feel too pressured to do anything especially because we really want a rage blade to come off of that twitch and Alawi really likes war mogs or chain vest or even stone plate so right now i don't want to waste any of our item components on something that could be 
infinitely better. For our second augment, we've got Thrill of the Hunt, Swift Shock Crest, or Component Grag Bag. And Swift Shock Crest actually would be pretty decent early game, but I think it falls off hard just because once we hit level eight, there's no one really left, there's no one else really left to throw in in lieu of our other Swift Shot. There's no one really great to make as our other Swift Shot. Our, our main carries are Varus and then also Zaya later on. So for those item related reasons I said earlier, we're going to go for Component Grab Bag to make a Rage Blade, Death Blade, anything in that category, or even take items on Alawi. And we do get a Rod and a uh, Chain Vest, so we make Stone Plate and Rage Blade. And we even slam a Redemption on Alawi just to give us instant value on everything that we just made. And there's nothing really else we can do with this many tiers. Bows are really going to be saved for Varus items, so Redemption Plus to Bramble is going to be really good for our Alawi. And now we're just slowly leveling up to six. We do get a second Varus in our shop, which is real nice, because then we can leave it on our bench and get a little bit of those preparation stacks. We're also passively picking up Alawis. I do decide to swap out a Twitch with the Ezreal just so we can get put the Rage Blade on Varus as soon as possible. This is mostly just in case we find two Twitches and we don't want to be put in a position where we have to go, oh, we don't want to make Twitch 2, and instead just keep it on our Varus entirely, especially since we're closer to getting Varus 2 than we are to Twitch 2 anyways. So this is just going to make our main damage dealer a little bit better. And now we're wind streaking, so on third carousel, we're going to go pretty much last. And main idea here is that we want another sword so we can get a death blade. If we can't land one of those, we'll probably get a cloak so that when we get another bow, we're going to get a rune on hurricane. And we don't get a sword, so we just take another chain vest, and we just decide to make it into a frozen heart. It's a little sad, but we do manage to find ourselves a Varus 2, and that's a really good pickup for us. So now we're level 6. We don't have another bruiser to throw in yet, so we just throw in a twitch to give us that guild twitch bonus. Extra little bit of attack speed for our Varus. That's really going to let him stack up the Gwinsu's Rage Blade stacks a little bit faster. And here's a really unlucky bit that we're going to see about playing Varus is that we're really weak to assassins so scouting's really important especially since there tends to be a lot of assassin boards in the game and then you have maybe someone who's playing siphon and has in a thresh so you kind of have to find a way to position them both not in the corner but also not easily accessible to assassins and you can't actually roll at six for your three star three costs you have decent chances from those astral shops to get three star costs but we found a zaya so we decided to throw in four swift shot and we're going to push to seven so we can throw in our tank again we're pretty stable we have two stars we have two star front line as well as four different damage dealers and a two star Varus. And even by 3 7, we have five Varus. Off of Wolves, we got a Belt, a Rod, as well as a Siphon. Now, Siphon doesn't fit our comp literally at all. So we're just going to use it as gold and level up to seven so we can throw in Silas again, especially because we want that Frozen Heart value. There's also no great spatulas to build in this comp. So we're just going to leave this spatula on the side and hope that we get a Force of Nature for our comp and fit in another unit maybe. For our third augment, Dragon Horde, terrible for us, doesn't help us at all. We don't have a single dragon in our comp. Cybernetic Uplink, we're not really going for mana at all, so also bad for our comp. Salvage Bin could be okay to give us a full item, especially since we're still missing out on a decent amount of our items. We could reroll, but we might get a bunch of stuff that's even worse, so I go ahead and take it. The main thing that's good about it is we can break apart items now. That especially helps later on in the game when you start getting whole items off of like Carousel maybe, and maybe you get an item that you don't want, but item pieces might be helpful for you. This Frozen Heart, not helpful at all. So instead, I decided to use all of our uh, item components to make a Locket Redemption for for us as well as roll a little bit and from our astral shop we actually get up to seven varuses and sometimes from this position i do just like to roll down my gold to three star everyone or three off of Lowy, two off of varus it's a little dumb of a play but it's honestly not too bad if you do it depending on what the pacing of the lobby is if you're really scared of losing a lot of health then it's really good but if you don't need to fight the urge <laughs> it's not worth it you're gonna miss out a lot on the interest which feels pretty good we're gonna hold a shen just because shen's a really good bruiser if we aren't able to find an Orn pretty quickly. I decided to roll a little bit past 50 just to uh, get that final Astral Shop. And we do hit Varus 3 pretty early. He doesn't have all three of his items, which isn't great, but he does pretty fine with just the Rage Blade. I would say his two key items are Rage Blade and Runons. Third item is pretty flex, but sometimes maybe you're not even able to find a bow and a cloak, so maybe Death Blade and Giant Slayer. Sometimes you can even go Rage Blade, Runons, QSS. It all depends on what's really going on in your lobby. But on fourth carousel, there's no more swords, as well as we don't have a bow already, so we can't make ourselves a rune on hurricane and we're left with a belt and a uh, another chain vest we do not need another chain vest item so we're just going to grab the belt and maybe try and make a warm augs for our alawi or something who knows but since we already have our three star varus mostly we want to start leveling up to eight now we're two off from treasure dragon as well and we're wind streaking a lot going to level eight will give us our highest opportunities to to get the four cost units we really want which are going to be orn we really want to two star our zaya a couple more siluses if we can once we get alawi three we want to take out 
have this Skarner, and it's probably going to be Orn, Shen, Silas, and Alawi as our front line with four Bruiser. You may have seen, but in this footage, I swap back and forth depending on what I'm scouting in my enemy teams. If you're ever playing Zaya, normally you want Zaya positioned on the side where the enemy carry is, but for Varus, you normally want him on the opposite side. It's a little weird. Zaya is really good at reaching backline units that she's on the same side as, whereas Varus really wants to just kind of freeze the front line and do as much damage after building up for the most part. He takes a long time to get himself going really with damage, so you really just want to position him far away from everyone. On Treasure Dragon, we're going to roll once and find a bow and a sword and then a thieves glove. The thieves glove isn't really a, a, a thing that we think about. We're just going to put that on Zaya. We really like the sword and bow combo because sword and bow are going to give us a giant slayer and a Zeke's Herald. Zeke's Herald's actually super broken for a swift shot comp, especially if you already have rage blade. It allows you to just build up those stacks so quickly. But now we're level eight. We've got our four bruiser, our four swift shot. And honestly, we're just going to roll down until we find a Lowy three, especially because we want Orn to throw in over this Skarner. So the faster we're able to do that, the better. And we're able to do it for about 20 gold. And we really don't need to roll down too much money to find uh, Orn. Orn's not super important just yet. He's just better than Skarner because he has built-in CC with his ultimate ability, as well as he gets Tempest with Ezreal, which is the main reason he's in this comp. So now that we mostly have our units, the only thing that we're even missing right now, Varus doesn't matter. All of our tanking is happening by this Alawi. So other than literally finding a Orn, a single Orn, we can honestly just go nine. And at this point, we're honestly not even as strong as we can be, but we're pretty stable. This is how most of the games are going to end. Normally you don't find Zaya this year early if you even find Zaya 2 at all. Sometimes you're not going to get Alawi and Varus this early, but if you want to really ensure that you're going to get it first, it's really helpful to go level 9 and you're going to throw in and honestly any legendary unit. Bard would be really good. So would Soraka to give a little bit of healing to your entire team, even Yasuo for some more CC. But here off of 5th Carousel, we're just going to find ourselves taking this Ionic Spark. Does a little bit of direct damage because we just do have some magic damage. Alawi does magic damage, Silas Varus does a little bit, and when you're win streaking, you tend to be left with the bad items, so that's what we ended up being stuck with. <laughs> uh, so we're just gonna win streak our way through stage five. We're really lucky that there have not been any assassin comps. This is very susceptible to assassin Olaf. You can still be pretty sure with a maybe a third or a fourth. You can still be pretty sure with maybe a second or a third, depending on how many people are running assassin Olaf, especially because once the first person Varus is targeting, he, he turns around and freezes the assassins, so he's still pretty decent even in those scenarios. More so than maybe if you're going solo Zaya carry, he's a little bit less susceptible to assassins. And on the test of Valor here at 5-7, we find ourselves with a rune on Hurricane. Now I decided to take my Varus off just to get him that final preparation stacks. I was a little scared that this we might not be able to beat the test of Valor <laughs> if, we, if I took him off. Honestly, this Alawi should be able to like pretty much 1v1 him the, anyways, as well as uh, Zaya does decent damage. But this rune on Hurricane is going to to be a great item to go on our final slot for Varus. And now he has his final preparation stack as well, putting his attack damage at over 200, I think I saw there. And honestly, we're just stable enough to where we don't even have to push level nine yet. We have so much more health on the rest of our lobby and we're stronger than them, even this Ezreal reroll, that we could just slowly level to nine and we sell the Skarner and we're able to throw in our Talon, which is gonna give us two gold, which is gonna give us two guild units, as well as he gives 10 AD to the entire team, which is really great for our Varus and our Zaya. So we're even able to beat this nine rage wing Shavana 2 comp, <laughs> which feels really good. <laughs> Anytime you're able to kill a dragon, I, I love it. I love the set so much. I love I love the whole theme. I love everything. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you'd hit that subscribe button, it'd really mean the world to me. We're about to hit a thousand and uh, yeah, it would just mean the world. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Murder Muffin. You have been amazing. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.